Hello and welcome to this third video podcast on sex and genetics. In this podcast, we're going to talk about sex-linked traits. These include traits linked to either the X or the Y chromosome. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and begin our discussion of sex chromosome traits and diseases. Up to this point, most of the traits we've talked about and most of the inheritance we've talked about have dealt with genes on autosomes, that is the chromosomes that are not X or Y. And so the Punnett squares were pretty straightforward. You might have two gametes here from one parent and then two gametes from another parent. And if we're looking at a specific gene, maybe it's this gene here, big A, this one's little a, this one's big A, this one's little a. And we do the cross, we can see that we end up with progeny that are big A, big A, or big A, little a, big A, little a, or little a, little a. And this works because each parent has the same number of chromosomes. They have two of each one. So it makes this fairly straightforward. Now let us consider traits on the sex chromosomes. And so we know females have two X chromosomes. So each of their gametes will have one X chromosome after meiosis. And then we know that males are XY. So half of their gametes will contain an X chromosome and half of their gametes will contain a Y chromosome. When they have kids, we know half of them will be females, XX, and half of them will be males, XY. The thing that adds an additional level of thinking is that males having only one X chromosome, any mutation they have on that X chromosome, they will express. They cannot be protected by an additional X chromosome like females can. Sometimes there may be a mutation on an X chromosome that will affect a male, but it won't affect the female because she has the extra X chromosome. In addition, this Y, this will not come as a shocking surprise to any of you, but only males will express Y-linked mutations. For females, mutations on the X chromosome follow similar rules as autosome mutations as far as whether or not they're expressing it. So I want to talk about three broad categories of sex chromosome traits. The first are Y-linked traits. And then I'll talk about X-linked recessive traits. And then I'll talk about X-linked dominant traits. Okay, let's go ahead and then start with our Y-linked traits. I'd like to first begin with just a short list of some traits linked to the Y chromosome. But first, let's remember that when we looked at the X chromosome and then the Y chromosome, the Y chromosome, remember, is puny. It's tiny. And there's not a lot of genes on it. And so there's not a lot of traits associated with the Y chromosome, but there are a few. Most of the genes on the Y chromosome have a role in fertility. So it's not surprising that of the examples of Y-linked traits, that infertility is the main one. Or it could just be reduced fertility. The problem with studying infertility as a Y-linked trait is that since they are infertile, they can't pass it on. So it's really hard to study. They can study a little bit better if it's just a reduced fertility though. Some evidence that hairy ears, I know that's a pleasant thing to talk about, but it is a trait and it is um, linked to the Y chromosome in some cases. There's also an eye pigment disease. It doesn't lead to blindness, but it can lead to loss of night vision and loss of peripheral vision. And I'll just stop with those three examples. But I do want to show you a pedigree of a Y-linked trait. And this particular one is the pigment disease. And I want to write down some features of this Y-linked trait. First, perhaps an obvious one is only males are affected. And we can see that here only the square symbols which represent males are shaded in. So they're the only ones that have the trait. Affected males have an affected father. Sort of the same thing as the first one, just reverse. Anytime you have an affected son, their father will also be affected. In addition, and sort of linked to the first two is that, or more to the first one up here, affected 
fathers pass the trait to all their sons. Because all their sons will get a Y chromosome. So this individual, where's a good example of this? This individual here at four, generation two, individual four, he had three sons and they all were affected. Individual two of the same generation had two sons and they were both affected. They could not have a son that was not carrying that mutation. Next, let's talk about X-linked traits. And like autosomes, they can have mutations that are either recessive or dominant. But we're gonna talk about X-linked recessive traits first. And of the sex-linked traits, X-linked recessive traits are the most predominant. And so there are several examples. I'm just going to list a few, but there are many. Some of these you've probably heard of, but some types of color blindness, like red-green color blindness, comes from the X chromosome. Hemophilia. And Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. These are all examples of X-linked recessive traits. Now what I'd like to do is look at an X-linked recessive trait pedigree and talk about some features of it. So here is a X-linked recessive trait pedigree. Your book shows another example, but I thought I would show a different example here so you'd have access to two examples. So what I'd like to do is just make a list of some features found in X-linked recessive traits. One is that more males have the trait than females. And the next one is females can be unaffected carriers or heterozygotes. So let's talk about each of those real quick here. The reason males are more likely to have it is because males only have one X chromosome. So only one of them has to be mutated in order for them to express the trait. Women, on the other hand, if only one of them is mutated, so actually let me write affected here, and then for females, if one of them is mutated and the other is not, and it's a recessive trait, she would be unaffected. The only way females can be affected by an X-linked recessive trait is if they are homozygous recessive. They have both X chromosomes with the mutation. And so that's why it is more common to find males with the trait, point one, than females. And it's also why females can exist as a heterozygote, an unaffected heterozygote. This pedigree is a bit of an extreme because it doesn't show any females with the trait. But you should know that's not a rule. Most X-linked recessive trait pedigrees will have some females affected, but more of the individuals affected will be male. All right, so the third point here is affected daughters have an affected father and their mother is affected or a carrier. Let me erase this here and talk about what I mean by that. We draw a pedigree here. In order to have a daughter who is X minus and X minus, because that's the only way she could be affected, the mom has to at least be a carrier. So let me draw the line down here. Mom has to at least be a carrier. She could be a homozygous recessive, but she at least has to be able to provide one mutated X chromosome. And the dad also has to provide a mutated X chromosome. And if he has a mutated X chromosome, he is affected. Now, affected sons, on the other hand, have to have an affected mother or she has to be a carrier. So let's draw another Punnett square. If they were to have a son who was affected, meaning he has a mutated X chromosome, he has to get that from mom. Mom has to either be heterozygote or a carrier like we see here, or she could be homozygous recessive, it doesn't matter. But we know that an affected son has to get their mutated X chromosome from mom. He cannot get it from dad because dad only provides a Y chromosome. Two other points I want to make, and remember I said that these were more complicated than the Y chromosome. There's a little bit more to think about, but what I want to point out here is that affected, affected females pass the trait 
to all sons. So if we look at a Punnett square here, if she's affected, both are going to be mutated. And so that means each of her sons will be x minus y. All of her sons are affected. And all da daughters are at least carriers, meaning that they're at least x minus x. So we look over here, she's affected. She's going to give each of her daughters her mutated X chromosome. And dad here, if he's not affected, he's going to give an unmutated X chromosome. And so they'll be carriers. Now, if he's affected, then essentially all their kids will have this trait. One last point. Affected sons, that is X minus Y, can't pass the trait to sons and all their daughters are at least carriers. If we make a Punnett square here again, if dad is affected, that means, and mom isn't affected in this case, that means all their daughters will be carriers because they will obtain this mutated X chromosome from dad. However, none of their sons will be affected as long as mom is not an affected individual or a carrier. All right, that's all I want to say about X-linked recessive traits. Make sure you can identify a pedigree based upon knowing these six different rules. All right, let's close with looking at X-linked dominant traits. So let me list a few examples of X-linked dominant traits. These include Rett syndrome, Rett syndrome is a neurological disorder, and it has devastating effects on almost every part of the child's life. They have a hard time eating, they have a hard time breathing, they have a hard time with movements, they have a hard time speaking. It's a very serious disease, and it, as we'll see in a moment, it usually affects women. Fragile X syndrome is also X-linked dominant, and fragile X syndrome is also a neurological disorder. The next one I'm going to talk about is called Alport syndrome. Alport syndrome is primarily associated with the kidneys, the dysfunctional kidneys, but it also has some characteristics that affect hearing and sight. Let's now look at a pedigree of an X-linked dominant trait. Okay, let's now look at an X-linked dominant pedigree. And let's list some features of an X-linked dominant trait. Unlike the recessive trait, females are more likely to be affected. And that's what we see here. Only females affected. Males can be affected, but not as often. Maybe I can address that right now. Typically, mutations that are dominant in this nature have a critical role in development, or in their absence, there is a lethal effect. So in females who have an, a dominant mutation, I'll just put a big D by it, it survives, able to survive, because of the other X chromosome. So it's still dominant because it exerts that main phenotype, but it allows the individual to live because it has a bit of function on the other chromosome. And for that reason, the traits, these traits anyhow, these traits for our class won't be homozygous. That is, they won't be this. X minus, X minus. We won't talk about those. Because frequently, X minus, X minus, homozygous dominant mutations on the X chromosome tend to be lethal. So with that in mind, an individual who is XY, a male, who has this dominant mutation, usually don't survive. Because they don't have that backup X chromosome to help them to at least survive. And as we see in this pedigree here, only women are affected as we talked about before. Okay, now you can see here, we have some new features that we haven't seen before, and they are these smaller circles. Whenever you see a smaller symbol like this, it represents a spontaneous abortion. If it's a circle, it's a, it's a female that was spontaneously aborted. If it's a square, it's a male that was spontaneously aborted. If it's a diamond, it's a spontaneously aborted embryo or fetus that we do not know the sex of. 
knowing that and looking at that, this, it also provides us a little something additional about this specific pedigree. It says one might conclude from this pedigree that even heterozygotes don't always survive. Even having one of the X, two X chromosomes mutated is severe enough to make surviving not always possible. You will also notice we don't see any small squares indicating that any males who had this trait didn't even make it further far enough to be reported as a spontaneous abortion. Okay, let's talk about some other things here. Affected individuals have an affected parent. In our case, it's going to be the mother. We'll have an affected mother. Something else I should say connected to this is it can't skip a generation, just like autosomal dominant traits. So excellent dominant traits can't skip a generation. As I'm writing this, I just realized I forgot to say that, I'll put it in green here, X-linked recessive traits can skip generations. I should have said that on the last whiteboard. So in your notes, you might want to go back and write that. Can skip generations. Just like with autosomal recessive traits, that can skip generations. Remember, it doesn't mean they have to skip generations. It just means they can. So go ahead and put that note in there, and I might try to slip it in in my post edit edits of that section. And then let's say this next one, which is similar to the top one, but I'll say it again. Affected mothers pass the trait to half their children. Now, even though it's not shown on this pedigree, it still passes it to half their sons. We just don't see it. They don't make it through embryonic development. So we just never see them, but it's still passed to them. But with the daughters, we do see it with approximately half of their daughters having the trait. This is one's a little more than half. It's just bad luck. But you would expect it to be half the traits. And just in case that doesn't make sense to you why I'm saying that, let's just draw it out here. So do you have an X-linked dominant trait? And remember, for our purposes, it'll always be heterozygous. That means this daughter will have the trait, and this daughter won't have the trait. This son will have the trait and will not survive, but this son won't. She does have sons in each of these cases that don't have the trait. She may well, this mother and this mother, may well have had other sons that just didn't make it through embryonic development. Now, one thing I would like you to be able to do is to look at all the sex chromosome pedigrees and one predict each individual's genotype by considering the rules associated with each mode of inheritance x-linked recessive x-linked dominant or y-linked you should be able to make a good prediction of each of their genotypes in some cases you might be you might there might be two possibilities and the data don't lean you to one or the other. But usually you can make a good prediction. I also would like you to be able to look at them and make predictions on future children. So for instance, if I put up this pedigree, this was our X-linked recessive, I could say, what's the probability of individual five here? And so if it's X-linked recessive, we know he's going to have to be XY minus with the X chromosome. And I said, if he has children with somebody who is heterozygous, x minus x plus what's the probability that he could have an affected daughter it being excellent recessive only half of their daughters now be careful how the question's worded if i say what's the probability that half of his daughters will be affected you would only look at the daughters and you would ignore the sons in that question let's go ahead and finish the rest of this out now if i said what's the probability that he would have an affected child meaning either a son or daughter that's a slightly different question because that's asking you to look at all of the kids. Now, it turns out the way this works out, it's still 50%, I guess, right? Because it's 50% of the sons and 50% of the daughters. But just be careful. Sometimes those, if I'm asking for just sons or just daughters, or if I want you to consider all of them, that could affect your answer. Well, this ends our third video podcast on sex and genetics. In this podcast, we discussed X linked recessive, X-linked dominant, and Y-linked traits. In the next video podcast, we're going to close this discussion of sex and genetics, and we'll talk about sex limited and sex influence traits, X inactivation, and genomic imprinting. Let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you on the next video podcast. Bye for now.